please start our session. Thank you. Please welcome Professor James Morley to the stage. Well, I'm so happy to be here. I don't know how to begin thanking everyone. Uh, if I did that, I'd be here for the whole half hour, and I would leave people out still. It resonates in my heart. As an American, we all went through a kind of common trauma together. And of course, it's different. But I, as a little boy, I grew up with the news uh, on, the, on the television, and Vietnam is in my heart, and in everybody's heart. And it's very special to be here, a kind of pilgrimage. I want to tell you a lot of... actually gives us great cause for not just optimism, but a program for what we need to do if we're going to change our human destiny in a more positive way. So these are my thoughts, and I've thought about them for a long time, and I'm very keen. I want to finish up quickly so that I can get your thoughts. I'm sure you have better words for this than we have in English. But English is a very abstract, objectifying language that uh, doesn't have good words for experience, oddly enough. So, we've been taught from childhood that you have to be aggressive to get ahead. Now again, I'm talking about the West. I don't know about Vietnam, okay? You, you need to tell me. But I know that we've been taught to be aggressive, to think of number one first. Uh, you know, in, in business school, I'm sure you hear this from American business uh, thinkers, okay? that it's good to be greedy, that it's natural about there not being enough for me. To be nervous about losing my self-esteem, this great American concept, self-esteem, okay? To be nervous about this. So we lose our empathy. Now another thing, the reason why we lose empathy is because of trauma. If you are traumatized... Optimist, and I believe that the scientific evidence and the common sense evidence shows that there's much to be happy about with regard to not something that we need to learn, that we all are always already empathic, but it's been educated out of us. Then I want to conclude by giving you some SSERL, who was born in 1956 and died in 1938, just as the Nazis were taking over Europe. Uh, Eben Husserl lived a remarkable life, but I can't go into too much detail. No one here is against science. We all think that science was a blessing, gave us technology, it's changed our, uh, we, we, we live in prosperity because of science and technology. We're not against that. The problem that Hosso articulated is that we replaced religion with science. Uh, if you believe that students are bad students, they'll get bad grades. If you believe students are smart, they get high grades. We create our reality based on our belief. And if we believe that we're all aggressive, competitive, that we're objects, that goes uh, to And we haven't been listening. We've been studying them now for 100 years, but we haven't been able to get the message we need to get. But instead of studying them like butterflies in a butterfly collection or, a, or, or bacteria in a petri dish, what we need to say is that these people have the answer for what we how we need to heal as, it, as humans, and how we need to live as humans. Shape the brain, which means that if you get, put your brain in good experiences, you're, you can design your brain the way you want to. And we can help children design their brains in a pro-social, empathic way. because you're describing it as an architectural launch pad for the human imagination. And what's interesting about imagination and creativity and play is that unlike conventional economics, which we call the dismal science, because it's based on scarcity, whereas you're talking about an economy based on no scarcity, but the limits of human creativity, the essence of what we really are as a species. I just want to throw this at you, what you said. <laughs> yeah, the, it's also my imagination. <laughs> as well. 
So I think the I, when I saw my students, they are really creative, more creative than I. They have a special skill to modify. And it provokes me because one, we, all of humanity has been shaped by modernity, and you can almost define modernity as the turning away from our indigenous core. We have rejected our indigenous nature and catapulted ourselves into this secular outer space, like the astronaut floating in space, completely disconnected from the Earth. That's modernity. That's the modern human. And I just found that very provocative, the idea of re-indigenizing ourselves. You know, and of course, it has to be in a hybrid way. You know, but I would just love to hear more of your thoughts on that, if you could speak more about that, because it's so rich. Thank you. So happy to, uh, yeah, to uh, uh, have this kind of comments and.